When you're rigging your boat up, not only do you want to make sure that your weight distribution is, is stable, but also you want to make sure it's comfortable. This might be the most important, single most important thing in setting up your boat. You want the oars to come right steady like this. Elbows slightly bent. You don't want to be like this when you're setting them up here. You want to be like that. You want them comfortably about elbow length straight out. What you want to be is comfortable the whole day. The distance from my foot is critical because I want to be able to put pressure against my foot bar and lean back against the back. Some people like to have a seat in the back where they have a little back seat here, that's fine. I personally like not doing that because I might throw my knee up on here and push down this way sometimes. If I have this bar too far away, I can't put any pressure on it. If it's too close, then I'm banging my kneecaps when I'm rowing. You don't want to do that. So even if you're planning on having someone who's 6'5", rowing at one minute, and someone who's 5'3", a few minutes later going to trade, it, you're just as well, you might as well move maybe the foot bar and the oar towers to you or away from you to adjust for that. Or what you might do sometimes when I have my son row and he's just a little guy, I'll throw a camera case, a hard pelican box, right in the front so he can push his foot right against that rather than having to adjust that bar every time. But making sure that stuff comes smoothly, comfortably right to you, that is critical when you're rowing. So another question that people have a lot when they're setting up their, they want to get their frame all set up and everything and make sure the oar tower is where they want. Even just the oars matter, okay? The distance of the oars between each other, we're never, if you, put these together right now I have probably about three and a half inches between my thumbs when I'm rowing I want my thumbs on the inside of the oars some people like like this wrap around but we prefer to have our thumbs on the inside it seems like I have more control over where things are at I don't want them too far out I don't want these things so they're sitting way out there like that because then you have too much swing weight all right now these are wonderful amazing counterbalanced oars started using these so my son and my daughter could row and you can use them with one finger right but you still you need a little bit of swing weight out there but you don't want it too much we also don't want them too close you don't want them like this because then you're going over and if you do wrap your thumbs around the outside you're just going to bust up your knuckles pretty bad um, you want those things about three and a half inches when they're dead flat not when they're up here but when you measure them flat they're going to be about three and a half inches of space between there and that's going to make it come away from your body when you're rowing back, all right? If they're too tight, they're like this, it's going to come too tight to your body. If they're too far, then you have no power. This stuff matters. You want to make sure that those oars, when you lay them flat, you can adjust your towers and you can adjust the distance of, from the tower and the oar lock to right here. That's going to give you the space between these. Also notice, I have these oar rights on here. Now, a lot of people call these training wheels. I've been rowing a boat for a long time, a long, long ways. And I will tell you, first of all, that's how I can continue to do this after 30 years. My elbows would be shot if I had to, uh, what we call index, and have to decide exactly where the oar blade is every time. My wrist would be cooked and my elbows would be cooked. Right now, that, that little oar right fits right in the oar lock and it knows every time that that thing's exactly straight. As soon as I pull that up and I reach for a stroke, I'm not having to hold anything with my wrist. I'm not having to hold it straight. You're way better off to know that you're going to get 100% of your stroke every time when you have those oar rights on there. Something else to keep in mind is if you drop an oar and you're tangled up, somebody's tangled up over here, you're doing something over there, you're working on this, and then you look up and sure enough, there's that log that we've been talking about. You reach up and you have to take one stroke. You got one chance to make it. You don't want to come out there and short strike it where you're in there and the, the oar blade is flat. I want to make sure 110%, every time I pull on those oars, the blade is sit to grab as much water as it can. And lastly about oars, this is kind of bums me out that I didn't come up with this, but uh, this is a really brilliant idea, these shoal cut blades, and I know that uh, some other manufacturers make some different blades you can put on your, your oars um, that are kind of this, this, 
I don't know, a teardrop shape, if you will. This makes sense because it has the same amount of square inches of blade in the water, but it's shorter and it's low on top and deep down here, so you can be in shallow water and still get a full stroke. So when that tree is right ahead of you and the water's only about six inches deep, you're gonna get the maximum amount you could. Imagine if this was a long skinny oar, that long, the blade's this long, and it's the same amount of square inches, but you'd have to be deeper in the water in order to get, let's say if it's 20 square inches, you'd have to be deeper in the water to get 20 square inches of this blade in the water. These little blades, especially for fishing applications, really do help because a lot of the work we're doing is in shallow water. We want to make sure those strokes are shallow, but we want to get a full stroke. You can't get that if you have a long skinny blade going in the water. That's about it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for additional rowing and fly fishing pro tips.